Hello again, welcome to chapter 10 of the SPSV manual as part of the Skills Development uh, Industry Knowledge Test. Um, uh, chapter 10 deals with staying safe. And it's about staying safe, secure, staying compliant with health safety legislation. So we're going to look at the National Transport Authority's role in safety, looking after your safety and that of your customers, looking after your personal security, what to do in the event of a collision or other emergency, handling and transporting luggage and other heavy items, complying with regulations. Now, some of the organisation organisations we will meet as we go along and their area of responsibility um, include the Garda, their area of responsibility uh, that we're chiefly concerned with is vehicle safety regulations, road traffic legislations, and importantly, criminal incidents, theft and assault. The Road Safety Authority concern themselves and govern vehicle standards regulations other than those issued by the National Transport Authority. So the Road Safety Authority wouldn't really be concerning themselves with standards related to, for example, wheelchair accessible vehicles. And of course, the Road Safety Authorities set and regulate driving standards. The Health and Safety Authority, uh, their responsibility is around the enforcement of the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005 and the associated legislation. And the Health Service Executive, the HSC, and chiefly they are concerned with a smoke free workplace and the legislation and compliance surrounding that. And because the taxi is a workplace, it, it must legally remain smoke free. So let's examine looking after your own safety and that of your customers. Now, according to the Road Safety Authority, driver fatigue contributes to as many as one in five collisions. You know, the maxim is an overtired driver is not a good driver. And the NTA take account of this, as do all actually the regulations around driving public service vehicles. When you apply for a driver license, an SPSV license, you give a formal undertaking that you will not drive or use an SPSV for more than 11 hours on any three consecutive days. So for example, you drive or use an SPSV for more than 11 hours on Monday, and again on Tuesday, you may not do so again on Wednesday and you must not have done so on the previous Sunday. You may drive on the Wednesday, but it must be for less than 11 hours. So safer driving. Um, naturally, the National Transport Authority, along with the Road Safety Authority, emphasize safe driving practices. They even go as far as to recommend an advanced safe driving course. Now, under mobile phones, Holding a mobile phone while driving is an offence. It's unsafe because it prevents you from concentrating fully on your driving. It's also illegal when you're driving to hold a mobile phone in your hand or to support it with another part of your body, for example, between your head and shoulder. You are permitted, however, to make emergency calls. Now, drivers charged with reading, sending a text message or email while driving will face a court appearance and can be fined up to a thousand euros for the first offence and up to two thousand and or three months in prison for a third or subsequent offence within a year. And this applies even if the phone is held in a cradle in the car. It's just dangerous to do that. You know, that it's common sense. It but you know, they've made it they've they've made the the, the fines and the punishment onerous because it's, it's, it's more common than we probably realise. Now, however, the smartphone apps used by booking services that notify a driver that a fare is waiting, they, they also allow a driver to accept a fare by pushing a button. They display the details of the pickup location and a map of how to get there. They're akin really to, to um, sophisticated uh, satellite navigation systems. They're not currently impacted by the aforementioned regulations. 
using a hands-free kit with your phone is not illegal, but it is distracting and puts you, your passengers and other road users at risk. Now, the hands-free kit, you know, there's a lot of the Bluetooth devices that people wear in their ears and that, but just so it's not confusing now, I mean, a hands-free kit, it doesn't, it still cannot be used to send a text email, read and read same, you know, just to, to clarify that. I think it's a little bit confusing in the manual. Um, you, you know, by virtue of um, using a phone while driving and all, all that goes with that, it, it constitutes dangerous driving, careless driving or driving without due care and attention, you know. So, you know, if we are to use a phone, we should stop where it is safe and legal to do so. Answer or make the call and read or send text messages. The RSA recommends the following guidelines while driving. Never attempt to write notes. Never try to look up a number on your phone. Never engage in long, complicated, emotional or stressful conversations. And while the use of two-way radios is not explicitly prohibited, it can be distracting or dangerous and can leave you open to prosecution. So smoking. So a vehicle that's taxed as an SPSV is legally considered to be a place of work and therefore comes under the auspices of the Public Health Tobacco Amendment Act 2004 and thereby smoking is prohibited in it at all times. That's a very important act, okay? That same act requires a sign is displayed in your taxi stating that smoking is not permitted. And it's the owner and or person in charge of the SPSV who is responsible for ensuring compliance. If the vehicle is not taxed as an SPSV, the prohibition on smoking applies while the vehicle is in operation as an SPSV, whether or not there are passengers in it. Environmental health officers of the HSC are the authorised officers with responsibility for enforcing the legislation. They will prosecute drivers who do not comply. And of course, you have the right to refuse service to passengers who insist on smoking in the vehicle. Now, with regard to persons under the age of 17 and seatbelts, the situation is more complex. So it's the driver's responsibility to ensure that a person under 17 years wears a seatbelt. Failure to comply leaves the driver open to a fixed payment penalty, penalty points, prosecution. Now, as seatbelts are essentially designed to accommodate adults, it is children who are at least 135 centimetres or approximately four and a half feet in height who are required to wear a seatbelt in a taxi. For smaller children and babies, the law normally requires special seats, harnesses or restraint systems, but taxis are exempt from this requirement. Such children are allowed to travel in SPSVs without seatbelts or other restraints unless a suitable child restraint system is available, in which case they must use it. However, they can only travel in the rear seats, cannot travel in the front seat of an SPSV unrestrained and without the appropriate child seat. So in summation of road safety, the recommendations from the RSA avoid driver fatigue, drive with care and consideration for all other road users, drive within speed limits, 
Do not use a phone while driving. Switch off before you drive off. Never drink and drive. Never drive under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Wear a seatbelt. Remind your passengers to wear their belts. And where appropriate children are suitably restrained. Now we're going to look, look at looking after your personal security. So, you know, a taxi operator, the nature of the work presents particular challenges. Uh, drivers working alone, often at night in isolated areas, you carry cash, you do not know your customers. Most of the time, it's not a difficulty, but occasionally operators find themselves in unpleasant or dangerous situations. And according to the Garda Crime Prevention Unit, violent incidents and robberies involving public service vehicle operators are more likely to take place on weekend nights between midnight and 4 a.m. and are more likely to involve customers hired on the street than pre-bookings. So drivers need to be extra vigilant. If your driver is affiliated to a dispatch operator, detailed records of all bookings are taken. Having radio contact with the DO means that you can contact someone immediately if there is any problem or emergency. Online booking apps maintain details of the driver, the passenger and the journey, and this can provide further security. Now, dealing with the difficult customers. Again, customers are more likely to become aggressive if they are of that mind if they're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. So again, higher risk times and alcohol and drugs on board, is, it's, it's a deadly mix. And Garda Síochána recommends some precautions you can take for a safe journey. Take care again in isolated areas. Pick up customers in well-lit, well-populated areas. Avoid getting out of your vehicle in isolated areas. Make eye contact and interact look at all your customers when they get into your vehicle continue to make eye contact with them even in your rear view mirror this indicates you've seen them and you will be able to identify them if necessary so interacting being pleasant and non-confrontational to them may also deter aggressive behavior reverse into cul-de-sacs where possible reverse into single entry streets arrange a code word that you can use on a two-way radio or mobile phone to warn a dispatch operator or some other contact person that you have or suspect that you may have a problem. Keep a spare key. If someone takes the keys from your ignition or takes your vehicle and abandons it a short distance away, you will still be able to recover the vehicle and drive for help. Uh, furthermore, reducing the risk of robbery. So, you have cash in your vehicle, that makes you more vulnerable to robbery. And Garda Síochána offers some steps that you can take to reduce the risks. Avoid carrying large amounts of cash if possible. Don't show or tell your customers how much cash you have. Don't tell them if you've had a busy day or a long shift. Keep valuables such as wallets and mobile phones hidden. Expensive looking jewellery, watches could make you more vulnerable to attack. Likewise, uh, items such as sat navs or phone equipment when you leave the vehicle need to be kept out of sight. Always lock your vehicle and when you're driving in it, when you're not in it, and when you're driving in isolated areas, lock doors and windows. Consider fitting an alarm or mobiliser to your car. I think in, in the modern cars now, really, they all have certainly immobilisers. And um, when picking up a customer in an isolated location, contact your customer by phone rather than getting out of your vehicle. And when picking up a customer at night in an isolated location, ask them to leave a porch or hall light on. Now, reducing the risk of fare evasion. It's a problem faced by many drivers and can be difficult to avoid. Again, and Garda Síochána, suggest some guidelines to help you reduce the risk. Ask for an exact address. Make sure you know the exact location of your destination before you start driving. If you work with the dispatch operator, tell them the destination if you're unsure about a customer's ability to pay. Settle the fare inside the vehicle. You are at more at risk from fare evasion if you allow customers to pay their fare after they have left the vehicle. 
ask for a deposit. You have the right to ask for a deposit or proof of their ability to pay before you accept them as a passenger. And if they refuse to make an advance payment or offer a deposit, you can reasonably refuse service. Do not chase fare evaders. It puts your own personal safety at risk for the sake of a lost fare. And do not take any action that might be deemed illegal. Do not attempt to detain a passenger by force or take them anywhere they do not want to go. If there's a problem, simply call the Gardaí and ask the passenger to remain with you until the Gardaí arrive, if that's possible. OK, so that's, that's good advice there from Garda Shia Khan about reducing the risk of fare evasion. Now, using security equipment. The NTA recommends some uh, ideas here that could be considered. Um, there are products and safety devices that can reduce risk. Um, you could fit a safety screen that will protect you from attack by someone in the rear seat of the vehicle. Also additional rear view mirror that enables you to see the entire width of the rear seat at once. Installing a security camera. And where the quality of such devices is high, evidence from them may be used in court. Now, there's a proviso here. If you do intend to fit a camera, you should make sure that you comply with the data protection legislation and that you respect your customers' rights to privacy. Now, some GPS systems allow your position to be tracked. If you use a navigation device that has this capability, your dispatch operator or someone at home will be able to find out where you are at all times. You could be connected to an alarm that can be activated in an emergency and the dispatch operator can then call the guard D with your exact location. Um, perhaps consider using an emergency radio with an open mic switch that will enable you to communicate quickly and easily with someone who can help. Again, that's a dispatch operator system really. Now, CCTV, just to recap on this, if you're using CCTV equipment, uh, you should contact a legal advisor or really the Data Protection Commissioner um, will give you proper advice and consider whether you have reasonable basis for using such equipment. So, for example, for personal security uh, reasons, obviously today now with uh, GDPR, CCTV has become quite a uh, complex area. Um, in terms of uh, privacy laws. Um, you should also check your legal rights and obligations in relation to the storage of and access to personal data and its use as evidence in the event of a security incident and obtaining the customer's consent, for example, through signs prominently displayed in the vehicle. Now, what to do after an incident if there has been an incident? If you are a victim of an assault or robbery, again, we're reminded by Angarda that we remain as calm as possible and do not chase the perpetrator. Raise the alarm, call for help and an ambulance if you're hurt. Report the incident to the Gardaí and your dispatch operator if you have one. Perhaps it could be a trivial incident, a trivial incident but it may be one of a series that the Gardaí are investigating and it can help them with other inquiries. If you have a security camera, make sure the evidence is locked and saved. Write down a summary of the incident as soon as possible. Include details such as where, when and how the incident happened, a description of your attacker, a description of your own condition during and after the incident, and details of who you reported the incident to. Now, what to do in the event of a collision or other uh, road emergency? Again, remain calm, do not panic, switch off your engine, apply the handbrake and assess the situation. Warn others, turn on hazard and warning lights, place the advanced warning triangle a good distance away from the scene, organize bystanders to warn oncoming traffic, uh, you should have your high-vis vest on, reflective armbands, or maybe torches. Call for help. <clears throat> 999 or 112. 
Do not assume that others at the scene have already called for help. Give precise information regarding the location of the collision, the number of vehicles involved, and an estimate of the number of people who are injured. Make yourself and others safe. Make sure that you are safe yourself before helping others. Place coats or rugs on anyone who is injured to keep them warm, but do not give them anything to eat or drink. Uh, do not move injured people. Uh, to reduce the risk of making injuries worse, move injured people only if there's risk of fire or of a vehicle turning over. Do not remove helmets from injured motorcyclists. Do not try to lift a vehicle off an injured person without help. Do not smoke. Do not allow anyone to smoke nearby due to the risk of fire. Wait. Monitor the condition of anyone who is injured until the emergency service has arrived. If there is a clear deterioration in the person's condition, phone 999 or 112 and inform the emergency services of this development. Report the collision. Now, if you're involved in a collision in which any people are injured, you are legally bound to report the collision to Angarda Shikona, either to a Garda at the scene or at the nearest Garda station. You must also give your personal and vehicle details, including insurance details, to anybody involved in the crash and to any independent witness who requests them. Again, be aware of your own condition, even after a minor incident which you have not received any visible injury, injury, you will probably suffer from shock, which in some cases may not be immediately apparent. This can impair your ability to drive safely. Give yourself time to recover. If possible, get someone else to drive you home and rest until you are fully recovered. Now, I mean, a lot of this information is when we, it was f first in, in, impressed on us when we, we, we became drivers, you know, when we did our driving test and it's become it's more and more emphasized now, you know what I mean? But the NTA are just driving at home with help from the, excuse the pun, with help from the Road Safety Authority. So it's 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 no harm to be re reminded of these uh, key, key important points. Now, when it comes to handing, handling, I should say, and transporting luggage and other heavy items, Again, these are recommendations from the Health and Safety Authority. Key rule, lift only if it's safe to do so. You know, we're not going to try and lift something that's too heavy and just cause injury. Um, think before you lift. I've taken these directly from the manual, you know, start in a good position. Keep a good hold on the item. Keep your head up and look ahead. So number six then is just put down before you adjust. So these I've just taken these um, pictures from the manual. So let's have a close look at the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005 and self-employed persons. And that includes the majority of SPSV operators and um, sole traders. They must comply with the same statutory requirements as that imply to employers. So you must take all reasonable steps to ensure the safety, health and welfare of individuals at your defined place of work, which is of course your car. Uh, you must carry out a written risk assessment of any hazards to which, to which you or your passengers are exposed. Take reasonable steps to reduce or even eliminate them. So this can mean, and it does mean, Maintaining your vehicle in good condition, driving safely. Ensuring that your passengers do not engage in behaviour that puts you, them or others in danger. It also means that you must consider specific risks to you as the driver, to your passengers and to other road users. Now, there's only so much within uh, an operator's control. You can only do your best to minimise risk and they're the... in, in there's some of the things that we've spoken about earlier. It's very difficult to eliminate risk, but we can do an awful lot under the auspices of the, the aforementioned organisations and Garda Síochána, the HSE, the HSA. By taking their advice on board, we can certainly minimise um, risk 
and improve our safety and security. That's what this chapter has all has been about. Again, they remind us about fatigue. The RSA remind us about fatigue. Now, the the health and safety uh, good folk do also, and we need to minimise the risk of fatigue for obvious. So, in summation, we have looked at matters pertaining to safety in your role as a driver, a public service provider, a self-employed person, road safety, personal safety, security, responsibility and legal obligations. And finally, health and safety at work legislation. So this concludes chapter 10 to do with safety and security. I, I've covered everything in this in this uh, chapter uh, concisely and you have it here in a recording. I look forward to talking to you all soon again. Thank you.